Welcome guys, welcome back to another episode here at Yasha View Ministry with Casa de Israel. Last week I became a father of two, so we're back with the Torah portions, the Torah studies, and the biblical truth and its context, its foundation. So, that being said, before we get started, let's do the Torah blessing. Bless Adonai who is blessed. Bless Adonai who is blessed now and forever. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who has chosen us from among the nations, has given us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gives the Torah. Amen. So, this week's Torah portion is Shoftim. So, let's get started. So, Shoftim starts off in Deuteronomy chapter 16. They're establishing the judicial system. Right, the how they are going to judge, who's going to judge the people, but mainly the main focus is how, because that's the purpose or the message that Elohim is trying to get through the people, and especially the leaders that are going to be chosen and the people that are going to be choosing the leaders for these type of uh, judicial services. Okay, it talks about the prophet, the king. Right, one like Moses, a king that will be chosen by God, and so it gives a moral aspect of how they will manage themselves. And we will see some ancient Near Eastern context to uh, compare and understand the cultural background around Israel and why is Elohim being so direct and detailed with what he's trying to say. Okay, so that being said, let's get to the reading. So it starts in. Deuteronomy, like I said, chapter 16, verse 18, and it says, Shoftim vasho terim tit den lecha bechal shearecha asher adonai elochecha noten lecha lish betecha vasha betu et haam mishpatim sedech. In English, it says the following. You shall appoint for yourself judges and officers in all your towns which the Lord your God has given you according to all your tribes. They shall judge the people with righteous judgment. You shall not distort justice. You shall not be partial. You shall not take a bribe for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and perverts the words of the righteous. Justice and only justice you shall pursue that you may live and possess the land which the Lord your God has given you. You shall not plant for yourself an Asherah of any kind or a tree beside the altar of the Lord your God, which you shall make for yourself. You shall not set up for yourself a sacred pillar which the Lord your God hates. Okay? Now, Elohim is very emphatic on justice. Justice. Righteousness. That's what you want to pursue. Don't be bribed, right? Don't receive gifts for the benefit of helping others or gaining anything. Don't help others with the benefit of gaining anything from those people that you help. Be a clean eye. Make sure that your eye is on the right place. Make sure you're focused. Then he gives you an explanation of don't build any share tree or pole or anything next to the altar. Right. Those are concepts that the nation, especially in the land of Israel, based on fertility rituals that they would do to their gods uh, when they want to rain, etc., etc. So we're going to focus on a PowerPoint that I made so that we can get through some examples of ancient Near Eastern context and how other nations, especially Egypt, saw the concept of justice. Okay. Like I said, this week's Torah portion is Shoptim and is in Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 18 through chapter 21 verse 9 and the half that portion of the prophet's portion is isaiah 51 verse 12 through chapter 52 verse 12 and the brichalasha portion is matthew chapter 3 verse 1 through 17. so in Deuteronomy 16 verse 19 it says the following you shall not distort justice you shall not be partial and you shall not take a bribe for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and perverts the words of the righteous. In Mesopotamia, an important concept of justice grew up across the centuries. A major part of the king's mission was to establish justice and to liberate the oppressed, a high calling. Nevertheless, justice was elusive and almost inaccessible. 
to the lower class. Social reforms in Mesopotamia and Egypt to see that justice was rendered were established with respect to the weak in society. In Mesopotamia, various laws were promulgated to establish justice in the land. Okay, the social theological activity was to enable the king's servant, right, to serve the gods properly. The king could issue special proclamations of mercy as needed. In Egypt, the king or pharaoh likewise maintained ma'at, which is order and justice. The vizier, which was the highest official in ancient Egypt, to serve pharaoh, the second in command, and his secretary, were to see that of righteousness was carried out. The theme of justice for all was carried out into the new kingdom and beyond. Even in the chaotic intermediate periods, they attempted to preserve what is called justice. Pharaoh Keti I said these words, I did what the people love and what God's praise. I gave bread to the hungry. I clothed the naked. I listened to the plea of the widow. I gave a home to the orphan. So question is, is justice the key? Is justice the key to the answer of how humanity can withstand oppression, or equality can be established fairly. The word translated as justice in Hebrew is sedech, right? Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 20 says this, sedech, sedech, you shall pursue that you may live and possess the land which your Yehovah, your God is giving you. Now, sedech and justice go together, but they're very different emphasis, right? Because justice, justice, you shall fulfill is very different than righteousness, righteousness, because righteousness is held by a standard based on what God believes and establishes as being righteous. What is righteous for God? Because justice can be very elusive, like we just read. Justice for me, cannot be necessarily justice for you and vice versa. But righteousness is based on something deeper. When God says an emphasis, righteousness, righteousness, you shall pursue so that you may live and possess the land which your, who are your uh, God is giving you. What does it mean to be righteous? For many people, righteousness is a sign to people who act holier than you or self-righteous people who point fingers and see themselves as better than someone else. But this is not how the Bible sees righteousness. Others assign righteousness to those who follow a moral compass of what is good or right and pure. But it's much more than that. To be truly righteous is to reflect the face of God. And to find righteousness within ourselves, we have to look inward and seek God in an outward way. Deuteronomy establishes the following and is it very intricate points of this Torah portion it talks about the judges right you're supposed to stick to righteousness righteousness but it talks about the king the future king that will be chosen by God and it says the following Deuteronomy 17 verse 18 20 says when he's sitting on the throne of his kingdom then shall he write for himself a copy of this law a scroll before the Levitical priests and it shall be with him and he shall read it all the days of his life so that he may learn to revere Yahweh your God by diligently observing all the word of this law, these rules, so as not to exalt his heart above his countrymen, not to turn aside from the commandments to the right or to the left, so that he may reign long over the kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. All right, so this is the king of Israel. So this is what righteousness is. The prophet, what is the prophet going to say? A prophet of God. What does the prophet of God say? It says, Deuteronomy 18, verse 18 to 22 say, I will raise a prophet for them from among their countrymen like you. I will place my word into his mouth. He shall speak to them everything that I command him. And then the man that will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I will hold accountable. However, the prophet that behaves presumptuously by speaking a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, and who speaks in the name of other gods, 
and that prophet shall die. And if you say to yourself, how can I know the word that Yahweh has not spoken it? Whenever what a prophet spoke in the name of Yahweh, that thing does not take place and does not come out, that is the thing that Yahweh has not spoken. Presumptuously, the prophet spoke it. You shall not fear him. Judges, the king of Israel, the prophet like Moses, they're all supposed to hold themselves to righteousness. God's righteousness is based on his commandments, his Torah, his instructions, his heart, whatever makes you feel more comfortable. But that is what God's righteousness is established in his instructions of how you live you can base your system of justice on whatever you believe your own righteousness is but the biblical righteousness is in the books of the torah basically god giving his heart to his people and letting him know this is what i want you to do as you march to the land as you go into the land and as you establish yourself in the land this is what I want you to do. This is the righteousness. And if you stick to these righteous words, you will be fulfilled. You will be prospered. So what does Yeshua say about righteousness? Because Jesus Christ, which some believe he is a prophet like Moses, which he necessarily is. And he is the anointed one that is to come back as king of Israel. All right. So, this is what Yeshua said in Matthew chapter 6. Be aware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. So, when you give to the poor, do not sound trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in synagogues and in streets, so that they may be honored by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. But when you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what the right hand is doing. So that your giving will be in secret and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you when you pray and you're not to be like the hypocrites for they love to stand and pray in synagogues and on the street corner so that they may be seen by men truly i say to you they have their reward in full but you when you pray go into your inner room close your door Play to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetitions as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. So, for this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on it. It's not life more than food, and the body more than clothing. Look at the, bir the birds in the air, that they do not sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. So, are you not worth much more than they? And who of you, being worried, can add a single hour to his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that even Solomon... In all his glory, clothe himself like one of these. Yeah, I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothe himself like one of these. But if God so clothe the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow, is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith, do not worry then, saying, What will I wear? What will I eat? What will I drink? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, for your heavenly Father knows you need all these things but seek the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you so do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will care for itself each day has enough trouble on its own elohim tells the judges righteousness righteousness you shall pursue the king of israel is supposed to follow god's righteousness write it on his scroll read it Meditate on it and understand that it is not his will that it must be done. It's God's will that must be done. The prophet can only speak God's word that are put into his mouth based on his righteousness, his Torah, his instruction, his order, his heart, whatever makes you feel better. But for you guys, understand something. Righteousness and righteousness you shall pursue because that is the difference between you and the world. As you go into the world, you're not judges. You might not be literal kings or prophets, but your testimony and your lifestyle can change anybody and can give a new 
perspective about how God works and how God moves. But if we don't go into the world and apply God's righteousness, then all the world is seeing is your own righteousness and your own justice. And then your representation of God's image inwardly and outwardly won't be truthful and honored because they will see that you are another denomination, another manipulation in the world. Remember, God's righteousness is true. And the moment that we believe in that and we apply it, he says you will be rewarded and you will be blessed and he will guide you in everything. He'll be light to your feet. He will guide everything that comes out of your word and your heart. So Yeshua says, be aware, seek the kingdom, seek righteousness, God's order, God's purpose, and trust me, Elohim will respond to you in the appropriate time. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy this week, enjoy this video, make your parents read with you as a Torah portion. It's from 16 to 21. We only talked about 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Parents, take some time. Read it with your children. And, and, I'll see you next week. Shavuot Tov. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Bro, I really like this new merch, bro. I dig it. So, this guy uses this book to study. Yeah. <laughs>